Hey everybody, it's Tammy in the kitchen again. Welcome back to Great Lakes Junction. If you're new here, welcome aboard. I thought I'd fire up my oven today and make some bread. It's nice and cool outside. It's not too hot in the house and it's a perfect day for some nice fresh bread. So follow along and I'll show you the recipe. to apologize first off for all the noise if you can hear it in the background the boys are out in the yard cleaning up and getting ready for winter um, cutting grass cleaning the gardens out and I have my dehydrator going so sorry about the noise if you can hear it um, so this bread that I make it's super easy I've been making it for a lot of years um, it comes together quick and it's really tasty. So I'll call off the recipe so you can make it with the video and I'll post the recipe below too in the description for you. I have one and a quarter cups of warm water, not too hot, baby bottle temperature. Um, if it gets too hot, it will actually damage your yeast so it doesn't um, rise properly. Um, I have two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast and one teaspoon of sugar and I'm just going to put it down in the water this yeast is uh, rapid active so you really don't need it to sit um, and proof it all I just stir it in a little bit so it starts activating. If you're questioning your yeast that it might not be good still, you can leave it sit and see if it foams up at all. If it doesn't foam, that means you need some new yeast. Um, best way to keep it is in a fridge or in a freezer. I usually keep mine in the freezer. Um, and then I take it out just before I'm gonna bake some bread, let it warm up a little bit. So that's it for that. We have two tablespoons of olive oil gonna go in. And you can use butter if you'd like, or if you'd like, you could use a different kind of oil. That's fine. I tend to use olive oil. Um, it does have a vague taste to it, but it's not that strong. And then we're going to add three cups of flour. Now, this is an Italian bread, so I'm going to put some herbs and spices in it. Um, one other thing too, you need a teaspoon or two of salt in your bread um, just to bring out the flavors of the bread after it's cooked. But best to put it on top of your flour and not with your yeast. Your yeast will actually die from salt. So I always put it in near the end. And then because this is Italian bread, I spice it up a little bit. I have one tablespoon of Italian seasonings, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of onion powder. And I just toss that in on top. And that's it. Now this has to be kneaded for five to ten minutes and if you don't have a mixer like this it can be done by hand so I'm gonna fire this up and we're gonna let it run for a little bit and then we'll bring you back I'll save you from the noise <laughs> If you notice that your dough is wet or dry, add 
a teaspoon to a tablespoon of water or flour, whichever you need, but don't add too much at a time. I just need a touch of water. Mine's a little bit dry. It just depends on the weather outside. If it's dry outside, sometimes it'll affect your flour and your dough. So just add little bits at a time. And we're just going to let this go in the mixer until we get a smooth consistency of dough. So it's sticky, but it's not sticking to your hands when you touch it. So I'll be right back. Okay, we've gone for about five minutes. I'm going to take it out and check it. Usually it takes five to ten. And I can tell that it's not ready yet but I wanted you to see it at the middle stage. So when it's done, you'll have a smooth consistency. You can see this is tearing apart. So it's not quite ready. So we're just gonna put it back in there and we're going to let it go again for another few minutes. We'll be right back. Okay, I think we're done. It looks pretty good in there. Let's pull it out. And we can check it again. I don't know if anybody has heard of a window pane test. It's something that you can do to dough. Let me see if I can show you. If you can pull it apart and see through it, and unfortunately I don't have a light by me so you can't really see, and it's not tearing, then it's ready to go. And you can see right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to knead it into a ball. And we'll get our bowl. And we're just going to put a little bit of olive oil in our bowl just like that and we're going to drop our dough in it we're going to move it around and coat the ball with a little bit of oil and we're going to smash it down there just spread the oil around a little bit and we're going to put it in our oven, the oven not on, <laughs> just the light on in the oven. I have put my dough in the oven so often before when I first started and had the oven on, <laughs> trying to warm it up to, um, you know, 100 degrees or so, just so I could proof my dough and I've actually forgot it was on and ruined my dough. So... <laughs> That's how I know. But you just need it on the light and close the door and leave it set for about an hour until it doubles in size. I also use a damp cloth or damp towel to go over top of it when I put it in there. Okay, our dough is just about ready. It's been rising for about an hour now. Um, I have... A bread pan here that is actually the same size as a normal store-bought loaf of bread. Uh, bakes up the same as um, the other loaf pans that you get for doing sweet breads. I think they're five by nine, four by nine, four by eight, something like that. So I'm just going to put some parchment paper 
in this so it's a bit easier to get out. Um, this has like a honeycomb pattern to it and sometimes it sticks on me. It doesn't stick too bad but it does stick. So we're just going to put some parchment paper in here. Just so it's a little bit easier to get out when it's all done baking. Let's have a look at our dough here. Okay, so we've doubled in size there. It looks good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to punch it down. Um, we're going to form it into our loaf to fit our pan and then we're going to let it rise again for another half hour to hour, um, depending on, again, the temperature outside and in your house, how fast it rises. Um, you wanted to at least almost double. So we're just gonna punch it down. And because there's oil in the dough and this oil has sat in this bowl with um, with the oil. You don't need to flour your countertop at all, but do make sure that there's nothing on your countertop. Wipe it really good because this will pick up everything. <laughs> so what I do is I just put my pan here and push it out to a rectangle shape about the same size as that pan. So it's semi-even and then you can check it for see if there's bubbles in it or anything like that. Make sure it's been punched down good. And as you can see it's it's not really sticking at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it up Get a little gap there. We'll find the seam and we just want to pinch the seam closed. So we have a nice loaf. You can roll it out a little bit if you want. I tend to tuck the ends under. And that's it. So we're going to put it back in the pan. And we're going to let that rise again for a little while. It usually takes me about half an hour um, for the second rise, sometimes 45 minutes, depending on, again, the temperature outside and in your house. Um, you do that, cover it up with a damp towel again, and you can pop it back in your oven. Again, no heat on, just, just the oven light if you have an oven light, and let it sit, and that's it. And then we're going to come back and we're going to bake it off and you can see what it looks like. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, there's our rise. Um, it's been sitting for about 45 minutes and you can see it's a little puffy on the top. Maybe about an inch and a half high out of the pan. So it's more than doubled. Um, so now we're just going to Put it in the oven at 350 for about half an hour and I'll let you know the exact time. It all depends on your oven really if you have a hot oven or a colder oven. My oven seems to be very hot um, almost to the point where it needs to be recalibrated. So we'll see how long it takes. We'll be back in a few. Okay. Our bread's all done, and I'm just taking it out of the oven. Do 
as you can see, it's nice and brown. My son's already in here asking me when he can cut it. <laughs> so all I do is take it out. I took the parchment paper off the bottom when I checked it. Um, and the bottom needed to be a little bit more brown for me. So I just took the parchment paper off, put it back in the pan and put it back in the oven for five minutes. So total 30 minutes to cook it. Um, it's quite crusty. If you don't like crusty um, crust, <laughs> you can put a towel over it as it cools. Um, wait for maybe 20, 25 minutes to put a towel over it um, and let some of the steam escape from it and then put a towel on there and it will soften up the crust so it'll almost be like a store-bought crust where it's really soft um, but do let it cool off I know it's so tempting to cut into these things when they just come out of the oven they smell so good uh, but it will wreck your crumb um, the inside of the bread so leave it sit for a few hours if you can best to leave it for probably six to eight hours before you cut into it but if you can't if you can't wait go ahead and cut right into it after a couple hours um, we'll come back I'm gonna let it sit and rest and I'll come back and we'll cut into it and you can see what the crumb looks like on the inside and yeah, hopefully you like the recipe um, and if you're liking this video please hit the thumbs up button and help support our channel and if you aren't subscribed hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified for the next video that comes out but... okay guys it's all done it's all cooled off it's actually the next day you can probably hear in the background it is pouring out with rain um, very, very dark and cloudy here today. So, good day for a bowl of soup and grilled cheese sandwich. So, I'm going to cut into this and you can see what it looks like. I did wrap it a little bit um, as it was cooling, so my crumb is, or my crust is not um, super hard. It's a little on the soft side. It smells fantastic and you can see it's a nice soft crumb um, this recipe doesn't need to go into a loaf pan you can actually just do it free form if you want um, there's uh, there's no real strict rules with this with this recipe and if you don't want the herbs and spices in it just omit them and you can uh, just have a plain white loaf of um, Italian bread and if you do the free form it's fantastic too you can do it in a long loaf or in a round whichever you prefer thanks for watching again I'll leave the recipe in the description below for you so you can go ahead and make that if you do come on Instagram or Facebook and send me a picture of what you created and let me see always awesome seeing new creations so thanks for watching have a great day stay safe